welcome everybody. We are so glad you could join us this morning. Wherever you are, we welcome you. We're so glad you could connect with us. This morning we have first up, praise and worship all the way from Canberra, an amazing church called Awaken Church. And Chris is gonna lead us in a song, Yes I Will. So let's join together, lift your voices, let's praise God. such a great song and an encouragement for us to make a decision to praise God in every circumstance that may come our way. So good. Now let's head over now to the Kwani's house to listen up to what Pastor Jeff and Mitch have been talking about this week, all about our PB Church at home. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm over here at uh, Mitch Kwani's house. Great to have you on the screen with us today, Mitch. Thank you. And uh, I know you like to be behind the screen, but today we've got you on the screen, so it's so good. I hate being on the screen. <laughs> yeah. But PB Church at home, today we're in Mitch's home, and uh, especially here with Mitch, because Mitch has been uh, taking on this special role of video editing, and I think it was about 10 weeks ago that we began this, yeah, when uh, all the lockdowns now. came down and yeah. we couldn't do it. And, uh, and look, just tell us... Um, you know, what sort of experience did you have video editing before you took this role on? Zero. I think I made one like 10 minute video for Summer Blitz. And um, I think that took me about 10 to 12 hours for a 10 minute video. So before before this, uh, zero experience. <laughs> yeah, so in one week you stepped up and you said, 
Man, we can't meet under a tree for the... Well, we weren't even allowed to do that. We yeah, we, that we were once. under a tree one week and then uh, within a week it was announced that we can no longer meet and we're kind of like, well, what do we do about it? So within a week we had a video up, I'm pretty sure, on the internet. Yeah. And we've just uh, just clicked through 10 weeks now and it's uh, pretty amazing. And I really thank you, Mitch, for all that you've been doing. And uh, we're really uh, blessed with the opportunities that this gives us. So just a few thoughts um, as we're sitting here. To, you know, what what's your heart behind this role that you've taken on you know what why do you do it why do you do it um well i guess christ calls us uh to make disciples and although our um you know although our circumstances for church have changed our mission hasn't and what christ calls us to do hasn't so um you know my heart is the same as when i was serving at church it's just like well how can we make disciples and what can we do about this situation that yeah. we're stuck in and um so i don't know i like a challenge so i get excited about that uh and boy has it been a challenge some weeks <laughs> yeah. yeah it has but you're doing a great job and uh so many people have been commenting Thank to you. you about how, how great it is to see what's going on on sundays and uh look just another thought here is um you know people come on to the live stream but what's some tips some things that they could do to make the live stream experience you know the very best for them you know what's some things that they could try um well there's a couple of things uh first of all being engaged uh, i guess the best thing about our platform and how we do church is that we can come on together and that we can still meet together uh which is really cool and really unique yeah. and um we're sort of really blessed by that platform uh, that we can still come together as a church. That's really cool. Um, the other thing that you can do is uh, sing along when they're doing worship. Um, be on early is another thing. Uh, we give a 10-minute countdown uh, before church. So 10 minutes before 10 every week, there'll be a countdown. Um, so if you're on at quarter two and that 10 minute, um, you know, 10 to 10 starts, uh, and you got no video, you can just refresh the page and it will load up. Um, the other thing we've had is sort of, I've noticed anyways, if you're watching it on your phone and a text message comes through, um, don't click it because it'll take you off the page. And then once you come back on, it'll be laggy and you'll be behind and you'll, you'll have dramas. So uh, definitely just stay off the text messages while you're at church. But text in the chat, that's awesome. So oh. the chat's really, really key, isn't it? Just getting on that chat and... Uh Saying good morning to people. Yeah. The other yeah. thing you can do really quickly yep. is get one of these cables. They're really good. Um, all it is is an adapter for your phone, whether that would be, this is an iPhone one, um, which you can get for Samsungs and whatever other phones are around as well. Uh, and that just plugs into a HDMI cable and then that into your TV. So you can stream uh, church to your TV, in your living room, uh, in your bedroom, wherever, uh, and get the most out of that experience. And it really feels like, you know, Jeff's in your lounge room with you and who doesn't want that? <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> or in today's case, Mitch is in your lounge room. Me, and, yeah. And uh, so good to have you on today, Mitch. And uh, I'm really thankful, you know, because I'm doing a lot of the, uh, I guess, the other elements that are going into the service, but you're putting them together and making them look great. And uh, transitions, I, I think about transitions, you know, going from one bit to the next and uh, how that's not this that easy. It's a little bit of work to make that happen. So Yeah, it's a little yeah. bit of work. But, but you're doing a great job. Um, just a final question this morning is, what opportunities do you see for our church continuing to do live stream? Because there may be many, many months ahead uh, that we can need to do this. And, uh, you know, how could people get involved? So what opportunities are out there and how could people get involved to support this way of doing church? Yeah. Um, well, I think uh, with the format that we have and um, doing church online at the moment, we have the best and the most easiest opportunity to invite someone to church, easier than it ever has been. Yep. You know, I think like, I don't know how many people, um, how many friends people have on Facebook, but I think I've got about 300 and I would say generally, you know, some people have a lot more than that, but generally it would sit around that mark. Um, I don't know, but you know, if you just shared the link to church, you know, if 10 people did that, there's a possibility of 3,000 people getting an invite to church, whereas, you know, in a week, one or two people might only be invited. So we have a really yeah. cool opportunity wow. there to do that. Mm. Um, the other thing is I find it easier to share a link than to personally go up and say hello to someone and invite them to church. So get on board with it. Really easy. Yeah. 
Well, look, it's been great having you on, on today, Mitch, and great to be in your home. Thank you. And uh, now we're in everyone else's homes that's tuning in today. And, you know, at the end of our service today, we're going to be reposting this message onto Facebook, on the People Builders Facebook page. And if you'd like to share uh, all that you're going to experience this morning with your friends, then you can just take a hold of that and just simply share it, as Mitch has said, and uh, give people opportunity to tune in and be a part of what you're doing each Sunday as well. So thanks, Mitch. Great Thank having you. you on. Thanks, Church. And uh, we'll get you back again, I think, in a few more weeks. No. <laughs> maybe singing, maybe playing your guitar or something. Yeah, maybe that. Yeah, yeah, that'd, yeah that'd be great. Okay. All right. <laughs> See you soon. See ya. Thanks, Mitch. That's so good. We couldn't do PB Church at home without you. Now, just a quick update. We have our new PB space in Horton Street. It's coming together and we are so excited for what God wants to do in and through that space. So stay tuned. We're going to give you some more updates as we get them. And also this week, um, we have our connect groups up and running on Zoom. So make sure you check out our Facebook page so that you can get all the info you need to connect in. It's really important that we keep connecting um, through this time. And a big thank you to all those who've been giving your tithes and offerings into our church each week. It's a great opportunity and we uh, have that opportunity this morning as well. You can click the little link in the top with the three little dots um, to be able to give to PB or um, send us a message if you're not sure how to find those details. We're happy to help. Now we also have Pastor Jeff bringing the message today. So that's going to be great. But before he comes, we're going to welcome back the worship team as they lead us in our final song today. Listen up. In the darkness we will waiting without hope and without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt
So good to be with you this morning and uh, thanks for that praise and worship, Chris and Beck. And uh, praise forever to the King of Kings. What an awesome way to declare the goodness of Jesus Christ as our King. And uh, we just love him so much. Let's just pray together before we come around the word today. Lord, we thank you for your word. It's so powerful. It's got so much truth for our soul. And today, Lord, as we look into it for a few moments, we ask for your life to be transferred to our soul in a unique way for this day and that we would go forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to get straight into the word. We've got this theme, more grace, more people, more praise. I want to look at the third one, more praise, and just touch into that a little bit this morning and see where God takes us. And uh, I want to begin. There's a quote uh, from a chap called Barry Dubois. He was one of the presenters on the show, The Living Room, that was on Friday nights last year on TV. And uh, he made this quote when he was interviewed about a battle he's been having with cancer. He made this quote here and it says, If you invest in negativity, there is no dividend. If you invest in negativity, there's no dividend. Well, I would agree with Barry and the Apostle Paul agrees with Barry as well. And uh, I want to look today into the book of Thessalonians, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 actually, because as Paul began to take the gospel into Europe, one of the first places he went to was Thessalonica. And one of his very first letters was to the church in Thessalonica, just a young church, just been starting maybe a year or two old. And uh, he brings this letter to them and he makes these words in verse 16, 17 and 18 of chapter 5. He says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. And the third part is in everything, give thanks in everything, give thanks. And you would have heard me speak on this before because I believe God's wanting to strengthen our walk with him through this time, through this passage. If you, if you read it in the New Living Translation, it puts it this way, always be joyful. Keep on praying and no matter what happens, always be thankful. Always be thankful. So we've got these three things, joy, prayer and thankfulness. You know, Barry's statement, investing in negativity yields no dividend. It's just so true. In fact, you'll actually make a loss if you place your investment in negativity. And some of us have experienced that and Christ comes in and he changes all that around for us. It's so good. Someone say amen. Amen. I'll say it because I can't hear you, but you can hear me. And uh, Paul's investment advice is very different this, than this idea of negativity. And so he brings us these three portfolios of joyfulness, prayerfulness and thankfulness. And uh, why? Why would he suggest that? Because the payouts are so enormous for us. The payouts are just incredibly enormous. But you may say there, there's a virus sweeping the world and people have been dying, thousands of people dying. Our way of life has been shutting down and it's starting to open up a bit, but it's been shut down. A lot of people have lost jobs. Things aren't so good. I don't feel thankful. Why be joyful? Why bother praying? Why be thankful? Well, why is because in the midst of crisis and in a downturn, let's not react and just switch over our investments because of how we feel. And this is what a lot of people do with investments. They jump out of their portfolio and they try something new and it's all too late and it doesn't work. You know, God's word is our investment handbook and it hasn't changed. And the circumstance of the, of, of the world will change, but God's word never changes. And so he's got the best advice for us. So let's not ditch the good, sound, proven advice for these ideas of feelings of negativity and things that are going to sabotage our thinking and then take our life in a different direction. Let's not do that. Verse 18, it goes on and talks about always joyful, always uh, keep on praying and always be thankful. And then it says, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. God's will for us. The, the Passion Translation says, for this is God's perfect plan for you in Christ Jesus. He's got a plan. He's got a will for us. And it, you know, it takes faith to be joyful in the midst of difficulty. Who would agree with that? It takes faith to be joyful in the midst of difficult times. And it takes faith to keep on praying, even when you don't see immediate results. And we don't always see immediate results, but God's at work, even though we can't see it. And it also takes faith to be thankful in the midst of crisis and chaos. And when life just sucks and things aren't going the way we'd like them, God's word is to continue to invest in thankfulness. And I think it's great advice for us this morning. You know, if we know him, if we know him, he is more than trustworthy. He's an all powerful God and he's got things under control and he is overwhelmingly faithful and he is incredibly 
loving and he's always going to give us sound investment advice. And so you may have an accountant and sometimes you agree with what that accountant, accountant may advise. But in this case, with God, we can always trust his advice. It's sound, solid, incredible investment advice. You know, not only that, if we're willing to accept his advice, he will give us the faith that we need to activate those investments. So we're not just told to do something and strive hard at it. No, he's going to give us the faith to be joyful, to continue in our prayer and to remain thankful in every situation. Now, choosing joy, choosing joy is a decision of faith and it's not an emotional response to happy feelings that come and go. That's not what joy is. That's something very inferior. So choosing joy is a decision of faith. And in Nehemiah chapter 8, where they've just built the wall around Jerusalem and the people are coming back in, he says to the people, he says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And he encouraged the people to choose joy because they've been so used to being under siege and so used to defending themselves from the enemy that they didn't know how to be joyful. And this is an opportunity for us to choose joy because God tells us it's good for us. It's a great investment into our future. So I encourage you to take that word this morning. Choose joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. And the other one's praying, not just verbalizing a shopping list of needs when we, you know, our spiritual cupboards really bare, but waiting on God for what he has already promised in his word. And this will restore our soul and it'll uh, establish his authority in our immediate situation. So prayerfulness is so important. And the third one, thanksgiving, giving thanks in everything. This is the forerunner to praise. You know, we're talking about more and more praise. Well, to bring more and more praise into action in our life, into activity, in our speech and in our actions, then we need to begin by bringing thanks, to have an attitude of thankfulness and thanksgiving needs to be a part of our life. And we've, so we've just been singing, praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, praise forever to the King of Kings. You know, be able to do that, we need to be thankful for who He is, thankful for what He's done for us. And, uh, you know, let me ask you this morning, is he your king? Is he your king? Are you thankful for what he's brought into your life? Can you bring praise to him? It's so good when we can because he's a beautiful God and he's a loving God and he's just taking care of us. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving is the third part of our uh, investment strategy this morning. Thanksgiving is the gateway into a changed atmosphere. It's, a, it's an atmosphere of internal victory over negativity and fear and doubt and all those things that are going to rob us from the incredible victory that is actually already ours in Christ. You know, it leads us to declare on our lips the goodness of God. So with thankfulness, we're able to move into praise. And that's where we begin to praise. And that last song that we sang, you can really sing that with all your heart because you're thankful to God and praise begins on the other side of thankfulness. So as we praise by faith, everyone say by faith, as we praise by faith, the Holy Spirit responds with his presence and a new atmosphere inhabits the room, the room of your heart, maybe the room of your house, the room inside your car when you're driving on, wherever you may be. If you're a business owner, the capacity of the atmosphere of your business has changed as you begin to praise and uh, change the way we think simply by beginning to be thankful and then lifting our praises to God. Amen? That's really good advice. And, uh, you know, before we know it, when we begin to praise God right in the midst of a challenge, right in the midst of our own difficulty, we are actually then experiencing an encounter with the Holy Spirit. We experience something very different than what we might have been experiencing just a few minutes earlier because we chose to be thankful. We chose to praise God. It's a setup for a miracle. In your family, in finances, in marriage, in health, when we begin to give, give thanks and praise God, we create a setup in the atmosphere for a miracle to come our way. And it's the transitional power of thanksgiving that leads us towards that miracle. You know, today, right across the globe, it's uh, Pentecost Sunday and the church celebrates Pentecost Sunday in all different ways and in different places. And uh, the book of Acts records a phenomenal encounter experience on the day of Pentecost and the church celebrates it every year. And uh, it's just so good today. Here we are celebrating Pentecost Sunday together as we gather. But here's the situation back in those early days in the book of Acts when the church was about to be birthed. You know, there's, it was pretty challenging. 
Jesus had ascended to heaven and he had left the planet and the 11 disciples plus Jesus' mum, uh, Mary, and Jesus' brothers were there and a few women and another group of people and a remnant of believers, about 120 it says in, in Acts chapter 1 and chapter 2 there. They were gathered in the upper room in Jerusalem and they were waiting for what Jesus had promised in Acts chapter 1 verse 2. He promised this thing called the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Jesus left, but he was promising to send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. And he speaks of there in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, where they were to receive, as we go to verse 8, we receive the power to be witnesses, not just in Jerusalem, but to the ends of the earth. And I often say, you know, Australia is like the ends of the earth, except for New Zealand and Tasmania, that other country down the bottom there. And uh, But we're at the ends of the earth. And so there's power coming. And so... Jesus challenges them to wait, but it's pretty tough. You know, it had become a long 10-day prayer meeting. It had been 10 days since Jesus left and they were waiting. And they were waiting for this promise. Uh, you know, in this place of uncertainty, they're mourning Jesus' departure. And they were in unity as they stayed in faith for the promised Holy Spirit. But so far, we're getting up to day 10, nothing had changed. Nothing had changed. And then one morning in the midst of their faithful waiting, there was a supernatural response. The Holy Spirit came like a rushing wind and what appeared like flames of fire fell on everyone that was present and they all spoke in other tongues, in other languages. And it wasn't what they were expecting. It wasn't what they were expecting, but God began to move. You know, great energy was released into the believers that day, uh, um, which has since been repeated throughout history in every nation and tribe across the earth. And the encounter of Pentecostal fire and the ongoing effects of boldness and speaking in tongues and the move of God has continued right through to today. And here we are, that amazing day recorded in Acts, two, in Acts chapter 2. They were baptized in the Holy Spirit and with fire and speaking in tongues. And the gospel of Jesus went out and Peter stood up and they began to preach. And they he preached with boldness and 3,000 people were saved and baptized on that very day. And that would have been busy, baptizing 3,000 in the water that day. And the church was birthed. It's an exciting time to remember. Look it up in Acts chapter 2 and continue to read. It's so good. It's such an exciting, one of my favorite books to read. And you know, here we are today, all these years later, a couple of thousand years later in 2020, and the 120 faithful believers then that waited for those 10 days that prayed and continued to pray and continued to stay in faith, that 120 has grown to 2.3 billion believers alive on the planet today. And not to mention all the other millions and billions that have uh, come and gone and are waiting to go and be with Jesus uh, in eternity right now. And, you know, it's just incredible what God has done. Pentecost Sunday, what a powerful day. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, it says there, Pray without ceasing. Prayer, an investment that brought world-changing results. Waiting in a prayer meeting for 10 days. They weren't dressed in black, you know, having a wake after Jesus had departed. No, they were gathered in faith with, accept, with, with the expectation of the promised Holy Spirit to come and he didn't disappoint. He came. And uh, what a world changing thing happened that day. You know, when the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit floods into a surrendered heart of faith, something good always happens. Say that with me. Something good always happens. And our only response can be awestruck worship, a life of surrendered worship to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And it leads us to a changed mindset, a changed vocabulary. And in turn, it changes our actions, our priorities. Everything begins to change. And the repercussions of, of, this, of this zeal for the message of Jesus Christ just begins to change our life. And how could you live for anything else than what we experienced when we know the love of Christ? And, uh, you know, that happened to me and I've just stuck with Jesus all these years. And I tell you what, there's been nothing better ever since and there never will be. You know, the ch this church here, People Builders Church, it was launched after 10 consecutive days of prayer meetings. We met every day for 10 days and met for prayer. And we launched this church on Pentecost Sunday, 2001. So it's a few years ago now. And, uh, but God did it. And it's time for us again this year, 2020, to rise up in prayer once again and move again in the Holy Spirit. Move in His power. Begin to activate the promise of God for the boldness and the authority that comes with the gospel of Jesus Christ as we share it with others. 
people's lives are changed. They will be changed. They'll be transformed as God touches hearts and lives. We don't have to do it. The Holy Spirit does it. We just are the messengers of his love. You know, you might say 10 days of prayer. Man, if I'm not feeling it after 10 minutes, I'm tuning out. I'm checking my Facebook. I'm going for a coffee. I'm out of here. 10 minutes is too long. And, uh, but we've got to change our thinking. You know, choosing prayer, let me go back to the beginning. Choosing prayer is a very good investment. It's a very good investment. And if you invest first, then receive the return. So what, so what I mean is what you invest in brings the return and you have to make the investment first to get the return. And so prayer, what an incredible investment we can make. You know, I wonder if the 120 on the day of Pentecost that were there in that room on that day where the power of the Spirit fell, I wonder if possibly maybe there might have been 320 10 days earlier. And then uh, by the time we got to the 10th day, there was only 120. I'm not sure. It doesn't really say. But the 120 that were there, man, something incredible happened in them. And the church was birthed with incredible power. And it hasn't stopped growing since. It's so good. God responds to the faithful. And prayer is an incredible investment you and I need to be making every day. You know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the Holy Spirit with fire and boldness and with speaking in tongues can be yours today, just as it was for those believers in Acts chapter 2. Simply this, relinquish your pride and control and, and, and humbly surrender to Jesus and ask him just to fill you. Lord, fill me with your spirit. Come and fill me with the power of your spirit. And uh, he will. He will come. He will come. You know, I was radically changed when the Holy Spirit filled me as a young man. And today I know there are many listening who could say the same. And if you're on the chat right now and you're going, uh, yeah, that happened to me. Why don't you just, you know, give us a thumbs up, a thumbs up on the chat and uh, saying, you know, that's my testimony as well. The Holy Spirit came, touched me, filled me with his power and uh, gave me the gift of speaking in tongues and things began to change. And yeah, that has been that's happened to me as well. And uh, great to see all those fingers coming up this morning. It's so good. You know, God's still at work. He's doing it in 2020, just as he did on that very first day that the church was birthed. You know, there's no return on an investment into negativity, an investment into doubt and skepticism and criticism and gossip and judgmentalism. There is no return in that. There is only loss, loss for you and loss for others. And so let's move away from negativity today. Leave that old portfolio behind. Choose to invest differently. Invest in joyfulness, rejoicing in Jesus' love for you. Invest in faithfulness. Keep on praying, not quitting, not giving up after 10 minutes, but continue in prayer. God's got something good for you and for your family and for the world around you. And thankfulness is the third area of this investment portfolio. Thankfulness, not just every now and then, but in every situation, in every situation. Now, this investment package is God's will for you, God's plan for you. It's the wise investment. That's where you'll see a release of the promise and the power of God in your life. And I'll see it in my life as well. And it'll not just affect your life, but your family and the people around you. You know, maybe you'll need to realign some things in your life to reprioritize some values and some schedules and relationships and finance. And maybe you'll need to wait in prayer for a while, maybe even 10 days. But the returns will be incredible now in this life and into eternity. You know, as we finish up our message this morning, thanks for staying with me a little longer than usual today. But Luke chapter 1, verse 37, as we finish up this morning, it says this, Not one promise from God is empty of power, for nothing is impossible with God. You know, today, I encourage you, put your faith in Jesus Christ. He died and rose again for you to release you from the stain and the power of sin and to give you a new, free, guilt-free life and free from shame, free from condemnation and to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Don't leave that out. To fill you with the Holy Spirit and equip you with His enabling supernatural power, His grace poured all over your life, making a way for an incredible future. Trust Him. Take a simple step of faith and just say something like this, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I give up going my own way. And invite you to be my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your spirit. Lead me forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can just pray from your heart however you want to. And God's going to do it. He's going to come through for you. He's going to give you the faith to walk a whole different path than the way the 
path of negativity would take you. You have a magnificent future. God's got it in mind. It's going to be fantastic. God's got you safely in his hands. Tell the person next to you if you're not sitting by yourself, God's got you safely in his hands. If there's no one there in your home, then why don't you text it in there and say, God's got you. God's got you. And he loves you. He's going to make a way. Lord, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for everyone that's been listening in and will listen in in the days ahead. We ask you, Lord God, to bring life, bring life, bring life, bring life. Where there's been negativity, pull that down, Lord. And I pray today that these wise investments will be taken up and we'll move forward in incredible joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks for listening and uh, being a part of PB at Home this morning. Looking forward to being back with you again next week. We're going to share communion next week. That'll be great. And uh, I'll pass it back to Claire and she'll fill you in on what's happening. God bless. Have a great week. Thank you, Pastor Jeff, for that great message. And thank you for being a part of PB at Home today. See you next Sunday for another special morning. Our PB band will be back and we'll be sharing communion together in our service. So this week... You have six days now into our next service to connect with somebody. So make sure you send someone a message or give them a call, for, meet up for a cup of coffee or tea and just connect. Have a great week. Bye.